All right. Well, we know that viruses are everywhere, but today we're talking about viruses of a different kind, the technological uh, kind. Would you actually know um, if your phone was infected by a virus? You often get warned about your computer being infected by a virus and a lot of that kind of information uh, getting taken or misused. But less so we hear about phones, even though it makes complete sense, of course, because you've got a mini computer in your hands. How do you know uh, if your, your phone has been affected by one of these malicious viruses. Dr. Ritesh Chug is an Associate Professor professor of Information and Communications at CQ University. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Chug. Good afternoon, Sonia. Great to talk with you again. Um, are viruses in phones always malicious? Yes. To answer your question, yes, viruses are always malicious, although there can be other type of malicious software as well, such as spyware, um, ransomware, adware. But in, in today's environment, we've just come to use the word virus interchangeably for all these different type of malicious software. Okay. With all, let's use it in that broad term then. Um, yep. <clears throat> is it always obvious when a virus or when this malware, spyware, whatever, is on your phone? It's not easy to tell whether your phone is infected. However, your phone will start showing some abnormal patterns or behaviours. So some of the signs that you could watch out for could include um, an excessive battery drain, which means your battery is running out really quickly. Um, there could be unusual pop-ups, or your phone uh, is performing slower than usual. Uh, also, your apps might be crashing randomly and the device could be overheating unexpectedly. So these are some of the signs to watch out for that will tell that your phone is infected. And that's because things are operating in the background, is it? So your phone Absolutely. is busy even yes. when you're not doing things with it. Yes, yes. And one of the things, the, one of the other telltale sign is often you might, if you look at your bill, you might see unexplained billing charges because the, the malicious software in the background is constantly chewing up your data. So that's another thing that you need to watch out for. Mm. Dr. Chuck, how do we get these viruses on our phones? Uh, Look, uh, what's been happening over the last few years, and I mean, in, in Australia late last year, we had a flu bot, it was called the flu bot virus, um, and there were about 16,000 reports that were received in, in just over eight weeks. So what, the, the, what was happening is the virus actually sends out a text message to, to our phones, which has links to malware. So clicking on those links, can lead to the malicious app being installed uh, on our phone, which in turn gives scammers access to our personal information uh, and our keystroke logs. As yeah, well. and and I guess um, when you talk about those links, it might be easy. You might be scratching your head and saying, "Well, just don't click on the links." But there are some pretty sophisticated ways of making you do that, right? Absolutely. Look, the, the, the links are worded in such a way that they, they, they evoke intrigue factor. So it could be a, a text message that says, well, um, someone has uploaded your photos. Here is a whole album. Click here. So the moment you look at it, you know, well, who's uploaded my photos? Mm. And you, you just go and click. Or it could be a postal delivery message, mm. whether there is a... There is a uh, uh, postal delivery that's uh, for you. So click here to um, access. And when you click, it actually then takes you to another page that asks you to install an app. So firstly, obviously, don't click and don't install any app because no postal delivery company is going to ask you to install an app mm. to, to access your delivery. Now, what sort of dangers are there in having these kind of viruses or malware on your on your phone? What What sort of things can they do? Uh, they can access your personal information. They can send that personal information to hackers. Um, they can spy on you. And when I say spy, that means they can capture um, 
your keyboard input. So everything you, that you're typing on your phone, that can be sent back to the, the scammers. So, so that would include banking passwords, or security codes, yes. those sorts of things. Anything that you type on your phone can be transmitted back to hackers. And used at some point in the future. Absolutely. Mm. Yes. Uh, well, it can be used to create um, banking accounts. It can be used to create um, you know, uh, a utility account. So it can, there, there are lots of nefarious uses of your personal information that, that scammers uh, use it for. You're listening to ABC Radio Adelaide, South Australian Broken Hill. It's Sonia Feldhoff here with you, and I'm talking with Dr. Ritesh Chug from um, um, uh, CQ University. We're trying to um, just provide some more information about viruses on your phones. You might perhaps be aware of viruses on your computers, that sort of thing, but not made the connection that you've got a little computer in your hand and, and it can affect your phones as well. Uh, it's not quite as common, is it, on phones as it is on, on computers? Uh, are they better protected, uh, Dr Chook? Look, I think, I think that there's a myth around this. And the reason I say myth, we, we actually have to look at numbers. Last year, uh, Kaspersky, which is a reputed cybersecurity company, uh, when they ran their tests, they detected nearly three and a half million malicious attacks on mobile phone users. And this is only one company that, that did these tests. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking statistics again, more than one fifth of mobile devices have encountered malware in the past. And on top of that, four in 10 mobiles globally are vulnerable to cyber attacks. So I think that answers your question, you know, and, mm. uh, we have a device that is open to abuse, particularly because 84% of the world's population now owns a smartphone. So it's an attractive ven venue for scammers. So, Dr. Chug, the next question, and, and I know everyone's going to be asking this, is how do we protect ourselves better? I mean, you said don't click on the links, but can we install anything? Can we uh, do anything other than stop ourselves clicking on these kinds of links that will alert us or prevent us or create some kind of barrier? Absolutely. So it's important to use a reliable um, antivirus app. Obviously, you've mentioned um, avoid clicking unusual pop-ups. Uh, apart from that, you should only install apps from authorised app stores, which is your Google Play and Apple's app store. Do not jailbreak or modify your phone. So jailbreaking is a term that's usually used for, for iPhones, where people go and modify the phone so that they're able to install third-party apps. And third-party apps can be malicious. So don't jailbreak your phone. And it's also important, Sonia, to check app permissions before we install any app. And I mean any app. Because, you know, whenever an app, whenever, whenever we install an app, we grant the app some permissions. Permissions such as accessing our photos, accessing our documents, accessing our camera, accessing our microphone. So we have to see what permissions we are granting that app. And, and so is it safe sorry. generally, sorry, is it safe generally to yep. say you can only access those things while using the app? See, once you've installed the app, the app is working quietly in the background because these are nefarious apps. They're meant to quietly work in the background. So once you've said install, it'll automatically install. You give it permissions and that's it. So it'll work in the background. Yeah, because there are some that say you, uh, that you can use things like location um, or photos. Location tracking, yes. Yeah, you can use those. Yep. Uh, and some of the apps obviously require that, you know. Uh, yes. You uh, know, I mean, and that see, sort of that's thing. Where, but, yeah, Sonia, that's where uh, we really have to be aware of. We have to look for telltale signs. We also have to look at, so for example, if I've got a text message and the text message um, looks odd. And when I say looks odd, usually the... Uh, malicious text message contains a link that has a series of five to nine random letters and numbers at the end of the link. So I would um, suggest staying away from it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, again, we were talking about um, prevention, uh, what we can yes. do about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, look, um, it's also important to keep your software up updated to the latest version. Often, you know, when we get updates, we... we 
just tend to delay installing those updates. So whenever a company sends out an update, install them regularly. And I've mentioned, you know, it's important to back up your data. Um, however, Sonia, if your phone has been infected, firstly, my advice is don't panic. Because people usually panic. There are some simple troubleshooting steps. Number one, uh, uh, already previously mentioned, you should use a reliable antivirus app to scan your phone for any infections. Uh, next, you can you should clear your phone's storage and cache. So storage and cache is a term we use for Android devices. However, for, for your listeners who are using Apple devices, please clear your browsing history and website data. You can access that from the settings of your iPhone. Then you restart your iPhone, and if you're using an Android phone, please restart it in safe mode. So there is a functionality in your Android settings, which is called restart in safe mode, and that safe mode prevents third-party apps from, from running. And then finally, you know, delete any suspicious or unfamiliar apps. And after you've done all of that, and if, you, if the problem still persists, Reset your phone to its original settings, which will remove any malware. Mm. 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 Okay, yeah. so don't panic, but uh, the, yeah, it's easy to do so, though, isn't it? Because you think so. What, tell us a little bit more about those the app that can perhaps scan your phone for viruses. Viruses. Uh, look, there is, there's many companies, uh, there are many reputable vendors that offer free and paid apps. Companies such as AVG, McAfee, Norton, uh, Bitdefender. So there's, there's heaps of apps. Uh, often people ask me whether should we install a free app or a paid app. My response usually is I would avoid free apps because free apps or the developers behind the free apps don't necessarily have all the resources to keep track of every malware that is released out there. So that's just some some advice. Uh, but, yeah, definitely um, install an app and use it regularly. Yeah. Um, my, this texter asks, my mobile always asks me to update my phone. Is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely okay because usually that's a message that's being sent out by your um, by the company. I mean, if you're using Android, it will be through Android. And it's it's very common for uh, these companies to send out uh, updates whenever um, they identify bugs. And so they're yes, and they're often so trying to you know fill in those gaps that scammers might be able yes, to enter into, absolutely. aren't they? Yeah. Yep. So the bugs that they've identified, I mean, the updates are basically patches to to the gaps. So yes, please do install mm. the updates. And this texter says, "Is the Australia Post digital ID app genuine?" I set that up yesterday at the suggestion of Australia Post forwarding. Uh, look, this is a very difficult question, and I can't say that without seeing the app. I'm assuming you got it from a legitimate source, and the reason I say it's very difficult for me to comment on that because, you know, uh, developers often develop third-party apps that are lookalikes of legitimate apps, if that makes sense. Mm. So, if so you got best... it from a legitimate source, yeah. and your legitimate source usually is your Google Play Store or your Android App Store. Or your Apple Store. Yes. Yes. Okay, so your Apple Store or your Google App Store, yep. if it comes from there, they've put it through its paces and it yes. should be okay. Yeah. Yes. Look, yes. thank you for all your help on on that, Dr. Ritesh Chug. Um, these are things that I think we use on an everyday basis yes. and yeah. would like to make sure we're doing as safely as possible. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Sonia, now, before I go, there's one more thing that I'd like to point out if it's okay with sure. you. Sure. Often people ask me the question, Is it, should I use Apple or Android or which is better for yes. phone security? Yes. In That's fact, a very there's, common question. In fact, there's a general perception that um, Apple phones are um, better protected from these kinds of attacks than Android, generally. I don't know if that's true, yes. but that's generally what yes. people say. That is, that is actually true because research has shown us that Apple devices are usually more secure than Android, and they're less prone to virus. In fact, um, a, a Nokia report found out that 
Android devices are nearly 50 times more likely to be infected by malware than Apple devices. Wow. However, the catch is, if you jailbreak your iPhone, you're opening yourself up to these vulnerabilities. Okay. So I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you very much. Dr. Ritesh Chug, uh, Associate Professor of Information and Communication Technology at CQ University.